And next up, we have Zach uh, talking about more than a reference, better APIs through empathy. Hello, I'm Zach Corlison. I'm a senior technical writer at Moz. And at Moz, I write our API documentation. Uh, we have one and a half APIs. I say a half because we have a publicly exposed API that not a whole lot of people know about. And uh, it doesn't get a whole lot of use consequently. But we also have another REST API coming out soon. Uh, so yeah, I write the API docs at, at Moz. And why am I here talking to you about API docs and empathy? It seems like an odd combination. Um, API documentation is my favorite kind of documentation to write. I love doing it. I love the challenge and the fun of playing with deeply technical material and explaining it well. It brings me joy, and I like to think that when done well, it brings our users joy. And joy, empathy, and API documentation are not a combination of words that you hear together often. Uh, so I'm here to sell you on this and to convince you that it is indeed possible and beneficial to try and combine these. So instead of doing Q&A at the end, I like to do it up front. Because we all come to these things with our own rich experience and we all come with our own motivations for learning. And if you share with me now what it is that you are hoping for out of this talk, I can shape the content that I bring, how I present what I'm going to present to make sure that what you are here to learn, what you are hoping for, uh, that maybe we can get closer to that. So uh, I'm sorry to spring this on you, but uh, if you have a mic ready to do Q&A now, that would be really, really awesome. So, what are you hoping to get out of this? What are you looking for? What are you hoping that I'll talk about? I'd love to see a model of structure for the content that you put in an API. So you would like to see more about, uh, hmm, that's, a, that's pretty broad. So if, can you, if, I, if I narrowed that down, would it be accurate to say that you are looking for components that go into empathetic API docs? Sure, uh, I can talk a little bit. I don't know if I can get quite that specific, but I'll, I'll head that direction. I'll get as close as, it's like a grenade. Close is good enough. You know? Other questions? Yes, please. Um, I'm getting ready to write my first API documentation. Oh, fun for you. I know, I'm super excited actually. Um, but sometimes the feedback I get on it is that we don't have to use sort of the kind of friendly language as I think of it because it's just developers reading it. Oh, that's a big fat lie. I know. <laughs> But I just want to kind of hear what you're going to be covering in terms of your philosophy about that, because I feel like developers are people too, and so... Yes. <laughs> yes, so we will absolutely I... talk about uh, why uh, human empathy is... Uh, the more technical your material becomes, the more important human empathy becomes. We will absolutely talk about that. And let's do one more. I'm interested to find out what tools and processes you use to get inline documentation out of the code and into another format users can use. Oh, sure. Um, I will have to diverge a little bit from the content that I have up here in order to do that. Uh, but if you will uh, repeat that again, uh, I, I would like to say that I would remember, but I do not also want to give out big fat lies. Uh, so if you will remind me again when we get to the end and do a follow-up. Uh, I would be happy to talk a little bit more specifically about uh, tools for doing that. I can talk about something, there's something uh, that we did recently at Moz that is uh, really germane to that. So I can talk about that uh, when we get to the end. So first up, let's talk about a definition of empathy so that we all know what it is that we're talking about. Um, empathy is the ability to mutually experience the thoughts emotions, and direct experience of others. Empathy and sympathy are sometimes used interchangeably 
And uh, there is a difference between the two, and it's important to differentiate. Sympathy is a feeling of care or concern for the state of another. Whereas empathy is specifically the ability to recognize and mutually experience the state of another. So sympathy is a feeling, empathy is an ability. And uh, sympathy, it's possible to have sympathy without empathy. You can feel concern for someone without having any clue what they're going through. You can just perceive that someone is upset and feel concern for them. That's not the same thing as empathy. Empathy is the ability to look at what someone is experiencing, understand it, and in some way mutually experience it yourself. So how to bring this, what, how to bring this into documentation, specifically API documentation? So to write empathetic API docs, you have to understand and share your users' needs. And the easiest way to do this is to be an API user. Use your own API. I can explain Mozscape really, really well. Mozscape is uh, our big flagship API right now. I can explain that really well because I use it. We had the REST API that's coming up next for us. I can explain that really, really well because I use it. It'll change a lot before it goes out, but I can still explain it really well uh, because I, I'm a user of my own APIs, of the, of the things that I am documenting. Use other APIs and read their docs too. By becoming an API user, you gain empathy because when you know what it's like to go out and look at somebody else's API and find that the docs are terrible, you have the experience of what someone else who is coming to your site and looking at your docs, you know what they've gone through. You are able to mutually experience their state because it is a state that you yourself have experienced. So, Let's talk about some of the techniques for writing empathetically. Here's, here are some of the things that you can do in order to write with empathy for your users. First up, know who your readers are. Who's using your API? How do you know? Are you sure that you know? At Moz, we thought we, that we thought we knew who our API users were. We thought that we knew who exactly was using Mozscape. Uh, but we had no hard data to back that up. And uh, thankfully, we have some PhD data scientists on staff, so we asked them to help us build a survey. And we emailed it out to the addresses that we have, the registered accounts that we have for Mozscape. And we sent it out and asked folks to tell us a little bit about themselves. As it turns out, uh, our response rate was low for the entire population, for the, for the population that we sent out to. Our N was, uh, um, was large, but the, the number of people that we got back, uh, unfortunately, not statistically valid. Uh, but nonetheless, we still got a lot of data about who our users are, especially our paid users. And the print here is really small, uh, but this data is still useful. It, even though it's not a statistically valid survey result, uh, we're not presenting academically, we don't care. We just want to know who our customers are, and we especially want to know about who the customers who took the time to fill this out are. And the important data to note up here is that this is 50, 53, and 8. That means that our users are an almost 50-50 split between developers and marketers. We were right about who they were, but we were wrong about the proportions. We expected a lot more developers and a lot fewer marketers. As it turns out, our users were almost evenly split between those two populations. And that meant that we were not addressing their needs. We were not addressing the needs of a much higher marketing audience. And that changed how we approached API documentation. And that's the next technique, write for your readers. This may seem obvious, write for your readers. I mean, who else are you writing for? Right? But you might be surprised at how non-obvious that is in actual practice. All you have to do is look at some of the API docs out there, and you'll see that these were not written for you. These were not written for the audience who's actually coming to the site and reading API docs like you are. 
It's really easy. I do this sometimes. We all do, I suspect. But it's really easy to get into the place where we are writing, not for our readers, but for ourselves, where we are writing API docs in such a way that we are, we are meeting our own needs when we write them. We are writing to meet our deadlines. We are writing to make our boss happy. We are writing to uh, make the uh, OKRs on the engineering, uh, for the engineering team. We're writing to make our results look good for the quarter. And we're not writing for the needs of our readers. And it's, even, even if these are close, even if you get close enough to where you have this overlap of your readers' needs and your own needs, just a little bit of dissonance, even just a little bit of going sideways, is enough for your docs to lack empathy, for your readers to not have their needs met. So when it came down to what we asked our users from Mosscape, we asked them what are the most kinds, what are the most helpful kinds of documentation that we can give you? And the two things that they said across both of these groups, written instructions and sample code. So does this mean that uh, we should feel terrible that written documentation comes into uh, second place to sample code? No, because sample code is documentation too. It's a very specific form of applied tutorial. Sample code is awesome. And there's no reason that you can't write it. As an API writer, the ability to write code samples is a really good thing. And you don't have to be a dev to write code samples. Marketers are writing code using the Mozscape API. They're figuring it out and they're doing it. And you don't need to be able to write all the code all the time. You just need to be able to write the code that your users are going to be able to use. And that's awesome. As long as it helps people, it's good documentation. Next technique, tell true stories. The best thing that you can do is tell the truth. And this doesn't mean uh, that you have to be smooth. Being empathetic doesn't mean uh, coming off slick. It doesn't mean, telling, it doesn't mean uh, marketing your product. These people are already in your docs. Chances are good they're already sold. They're already there. They're already invested. But you need to establish your trustworthiness. They need to be able to trust that what you are telling them is true. Um, Jared, I loved in your talk that you were willing to acknowledge the shortcomings and the challenges that you faced, that, your, that uh, Google's product faced compared to your competitor. That's a wonderful thing, and it establishes your trustworthiness. It says that you are looking honestly and candidly at yourself and at what you're doing and saying, we're not doing all the things that we need to do. So tell true stories when you, when you write. And this is a lovely question. Why does this API matter? So what? Who cares? It's an API. It doesn't cure cancer. It's not feeding the hungry. Why does this matter? And when we get into this, it's really easy to get into this place where we're writing API documentation. We're teaching people how to do something, and we're presuming that the thing that this API does and the service it provides is a story that they already understand, and it's not true. You don't need to devote a whole lot of attention or a whole lot of time to this. You just need to tell the truth. Why does this API matter? And this is important because you need it, in order to have empathy for your users, you need to understand the things that they are going to try and do with your API. You need to understand who your people are and what they are hoping to accomplish. And when you can understand what it is that they're trying to get out of this API, their goal isn't uh, to understand the API for its own sake. It's so that they can do something specific. And the better that you understand what they're, what they're trying to accomplish, the better that you can explain why an API matters, the more empathetic and the higher quality your docs become. Provide a friendly UI. Uh, we're going to get to some examples in a bit. And uh, one of the examples, I'm going to show you the, the Mozscape documentation, and I too am going to be very, uh, very transparent and very forthright about the shortcomings. And one of them is the UI. Um, I suspect like a lot of folks, uh, the Mozscape API doc is a really good example of, um, it's, it's a good example to show for empathetic docs because it's really representative of what we're going to face. We're going to inherit projects that we didn't create 
but we're still responsible for doing them. And uh, to the extent that it is possible, I didn't have a whole lot of say in the, in the UI for the Mosgate docs, but to the extent it's possible, the more that you can provide basic things like a really friendly UI, the more empathetic your doc becomes. Uh, single page docs. Uh, last year, Brandon Phillips at Write the Docs 2013 uh, had a presentation called Single Page Docs and the Click Insanity. Uh, the easier that you, the, the, the fewer clicks that people have to make in order to get to the information they're looking for, the better. Better typography. Um, Matthew Butterick's uh, typography presentation last year was hilarious, uh, but it's also really good information. Um, and I will, I will cheerfully point out that this is Kara's font. Uh, I took his advice to heart and ditched Arial uh, completely. So uh, use the things that are actually going to be friendly to people. Make it as easy as possible. Reduce the number of barriers to knowledge in the, in the physical, in the basic presentation of your API. Engage the empathy of your allies. By its very nature, empathy is not a so solo exercise. Uh, practice empathy not just for your readers, but for everybody. You don't have to do this alone. You're not doing this alone. Uh, at Moz, one of the things that I did, I went to our help team and I said, hey guys, what are your big ticket openers? What are the, what are the things that are opening consistently the largest number of help tickets for the API? And it was not what I thought it was. Uh, but I had hard data to, to back up what those specific issues were. And I was able to change some things in the documentation and reduce the number of help tickets that were getting opened and take their biggest ticket opener and remove it entirely. And you can do that. You can show empathy for the help team. You can show empathy for your users by engaging the empathy of other people who are also trying to be as empathetic as possible for your customers. It's also awesome with test. If you can ally with test, you can incorporate a lot of really good testing information and test results. You can help test and work with them to make sure that the thing that you're documenting actually reflects the things that users are going to encounter. So let's talk about uh, components, components of things, things that specifically will go into uh, Empathetic API documentation. This, I think, it gets closer. Sir, I'm sorry, I don't remember. I, I don't remember it because you never told me. Uh, but uh, when we're talking specifically about uh, the components that go into an API, let's talk about those now. Uh, reference completeness. These, this is what we traditionally associate with API doc, uh, uh, like Java doc, PyDoc, what have you. Uh, the auto-generated list of endpoints, methods, uh, the big unweighted long list of uh, parameters accepted, uh, methods, things like that. Uh, this is, these are important. You cannot responsibly or empathetically deliver API doc without a, a reference complete material, but it is not enough. So getting started. Uh, Jared's presentation I thought was great because talking about that getting started and the very specific things that Jared addressed in getting started. Uh, explain how to do it. Don't op uh, you don't need to do a comprehensive explanation of every feature in a getting started. In fact, please don't. Uh, feature descriptions are going to be, at least to some extent, present in like endpoints and methods. And chances are that uh, there's already some sense that users have, because they're already in your docs, of what your API does. You don't need to do that. Just show them what to do first. For REST APIs, explain how to form calls. How do they actually make a call to get to, uh, to, get to use the API? And this looks to have died unceremoniously. I was just taking, taking a sweet time. Uh, give the most attention to your API's most common endpoints and methods. Wait appropriately. Not every method or endpoint is going to be something that your users use all the time. What are the most common places? Provide an order for them. Which endpoints and methods do they need to learn first? 
Are there other endpoints and methods that build on knowledge or proficiency with another endpoint? Deliver those. Uh, weight them appropriately. The more energy that you can devote to failure states and edge cases, what to do when things go wrong, the better off you are. Uh, sure, you can offload failure states to your help team, but they will hate you for life. And uh, it's not enough. It's not very empathetic. And it shrinks your pool of potential allies on which to draw. So the more energy that you can give to, te to, to telling your users how to diagnose and how to fix what happens when things go wrong, that increases the empathy that you're showing to them. Provide meaningful error messages. Uh, for REST APIs, provide meaningful HTTP response codes. Nothing sucks worse than a generic 404. Nothing sucks worse than a generic 404 than a generic 500 series. <laughs> HTTP status code. We're like, well, our server did something. <laughs> you know, there's it's, it's, it's not useful at all. So write meaningful HTTP response codes for a REST API. So let's talk about some examples now. Uh, we're going to review these really quickly because I'm running long, for which I apologize. Uh, so let's talk about examples. We're going to look at API docs and how they're empathetic or not. And I'm going to show you the good, the bad, and the ugly. So, uh, let's go to this first. Uh, this is the Twilio REST API. And this thing is awesome. You have really good nav over here in the start, or over here on the right. You can easily get to all the things that you need to get. And right here, these two opening paragraphs. This first sentence, the Twilio REST API allows you to query metadata about your account, phone numbers, calls, text, message, text messages, and recordings. Win! This is what it does. This is what it's for. This is why it matters. And down here at the bottom, you get debugging errors. So there's really good and really descriptive titles. These are not organized by method or endpoint name. These are described by tasks. These are what people do. Make a call. Here's how you do these things. Here's how this, this API is organized this way. This is the Rails API. And I, I warred between whether or not this was an example of really awesome API documentation or really awful API documentation. Uh, when I first started, it was awful. But uh, in the couple of months since I first started, uh, Apparently, they picked up on some sort of psychic signal of the mind bullets I was sending their way and uh, have since improved this page considerably. Uh, so the Rails API, uh, one of the first things you do is that this provides really good waiting for, uh, for uh, uh, methods and, and endpoints and classes. So uh, active record. Anybody is a Ruby programmer? Yeah, active record, the thing that you use so often, almost all the time, in Ruby. And it's the first thing that they show you, is the readme for active record. And this is really good. Active record connects classes to relational database tables to establish an almost zero configuration persistence layer for applications. When? That's awesome. Uh, this is the Mosscape API wiki. And I would say that there are some really awesome things about this. Uh, there's an overview. What's new? What is this? Here's how to get started. Here's the reference. Here's the samples. Here's how to troubleshoot. The reason I say that this is only so-so is because I'm not content with the UI. And frankly, I think that some of the content, I did this about a year ago, and then I put it down and moved on to other projects. And then six months later, I came back to this, and I was like, oh, man, I'm really not satisfied with this. Uh, we are our own worst critics. and. Uh, I'm not convinced that's a bad thing. Uh, so this has some things that are really awesome, really empathetic, but there's too much click distance. Uh, that's the, that's the, the chief complaint that I would make about this right now. This is the Google AdWords API. Um, this has some good things, some empathetic things about it, and some things that are really not empathetic at all. 
It's not easy to find help or support. It's not easy to find tasks. And the real killer is right here in the second sentence. The AdWord API uses SOAP. <laughs> you are forcing XML on people. Shame on you. For shame, sir. And this is the ugly, the Apache Lucene API documentation. This is one of the most actively reader hostile documents that I have ever seen. If you wrote this, I am so sorry. Uh, I will buy you a drink later and we can both drink to forget. Uh, and finally, uh, this is the Twitter API. And people talk about the Twitter API and uh, how marvelous it is and how, how good their documentation is. Uh, I will point out uh, my inner contrarian mandates that I do this. Uh, this thing that I have highlighted here, retweet count. This is a parameter that shows you how many times a particular tweet has been retweeted. This parameter does not have its own documentation. This parameter, you would take a look at this and you would think that because you are talking specifically about an integer number of times that something has been retweeted, that this would always be an integer. It is an integer up until you get to 100, at which point it becomes a string. 100 plus, that's what you get. This is not documented anywhere. So these are the kinds of things that it's really important to know. And it's not documented anywhere, so how would you know it except if you try to do it and then run aground? So this is not empathetic because there are, this is a really common parameter anytime that you're dealing with you're getting information back from the Twitter REST API. And there's some things that you really need to know about this. And the documentation does not give that knowledge to you. All right. Um, in Matthew Lyon's presentation yesterday on minimal viable documentation, uh, he said something that I really loved, which is learn how to forget. Increase your empathy. Place yourselves where your users are going to be. When readers come to your documentation for the first time or again and again, forget all the things that you know and place yourself in their shoes. Know what it is that they need. Empathetic API docs challenge you to deepen your technical skills and care for the needs of others. And you really do have to care. You have to care about the people who are coming to your documentation. And how many of you thought this was going to be a fluff talk about feelings? Uh, deeply technical material requires you to be empathetic, but it also requires you to be deeply technical yourself. I love API documentation because it stretches my knowledge. It forces me to learn more. But for all its challenges, API docs that are empathetic, when you show real empathy for the needs of your users, they are delighted because you have shown that you care for them when they come to your documentation. You are anticipating their needs, sometimes even before what they know those needs are. To turn this talk upon myself, why does this talk matter? Why does it matter? Why does it matter that I'm standing up here talking about API docs and empathy? Your users' time, their energy, their joy matters. Not just their product satisfaction, but their joy, their well-being as human beings. They matter. Your time, your work, your joy, these matter. You matter. Life is too short to do anything, especially technical documentation, without empathy. Life is too short not to have empathy in everything that you do. It's too short not to have joy in what you do. Good API doc will not cure cancer. It will not feed the hungry. But if in your API documentation you are fully present with your users, if you say, I sense your need. I recognize it. 
And I experience it because it is my need too. If you do this, you will make the world a better place. Thank you.